so that music's probably a bit too loud. But it's a lovely intro. Okay, um, let's put this film, this camera more in this direction. We can focus on some books. People like looking at people's books. At least I presume people do, because I do, when I see Zoom conferences. This one I particularly want to work with. I aspire to um, run a team-based right livelihood called St. Leonard's, um, sorry, Aspiring Doctor and Bedkers of St. Leonard's on Sea. Let me lower the volume of that a bit more. I don't want to feel like I'm competing with it, but I do want you to have some background music because I think it's really important to listen to music to raise your mood at many times. Um, that way um, you can integrate the, if you do it in a conscious way, you can integrate punk, hippie and... Um, Classicalist. There's um, a Moga, uh, not a Moga City. Here's a would be a Moga City. There's Ratna Sambava, abundance above me. Um, hiding a picture of the main woman in my life and her daughter at a wedding uh, in Liverpool. In That was a very poor <laughs> one, one word uh, um, accent. Uh, 1996. Anyhow, um, she may even join this Zoom meeting, but she may not. Um, and certainly I have an agreement with her that if she does, that it doesn't go on public YouTube, just on unlisted YouTube, so no one without the link can see the film. That's the level of privacy she uh, requires whilst I have a much more public life. And today put out on Twitter, my Twitter is at, um, my main Twitter uh, account is at Paul Crossland, Crossland with one S. I put out this morning that I'm seeking three people to interview um, Russell Brand, Maria Arpa in second place, and Mickey Cashton in third. Now, you may think it's rather surprised I put Mickey Cashton in third place, um, considering that she has, of this weekend, as you'll see on my Twitter stream, become, uh, for me, the greatest living teacher. So, you know, I have reasons that put, that put two other people above the greatest living teacher in terms of their significance for um, the independent candidate to come. I, you know, I want to use all three energies, just like I use hippie punk and classicalist. I wonder who the punk is. Maria Arpa might be the classicalist, because one sign of the classicalist, uh, like Bob Geldof went from punk to hippie to classic classicalist. Uh, one sign of the classicalist is uh, connections with the royal family. Um, so obviously Bob Geldof um, had um, Prince and Princess of Wales at Live Aid um, back in 1985. Um, that's a photo that I cherish to show uh, the personal transformation that's possible in the service of something greater. So Maria Arpa has been recognised at the same time as Marcus Rashford um, and uh, in both getting an MBE. Maria's is, uh, Mark Strashford's is, is for um, campaign for school meals for kids and leading the government in that, <laughs> frankly. Uh, um, and Maria Arpa is for her ongoing contributions to uh, the world of mediation. Um, Maria Arpa would only accept an invite, I think, for, on my YouTube channel in her capacity as head of Centre of Peace Solutions and not as um, president, chair, whatever the word is, of the Center for Nonviolent Communication, where she has stricter boundaries around what she does in that, with that hat on. So um, the main theme of this recording is temperatures rising. It has been in a way um, foretold by my referring to Mickey Cashton as the greatest living teacher. I mean, for me, Sanger Akshita, you can see a number of his books from Complete Works. Um, I was subscribed, um, now, I'm, now I'm not subscribed, uh, but I do try and collect them still. Um, although as I live in a caravan, albeit that I'm temporarily custodian of a, of a house elsewhere, um, I love the word, by the way, I love the word that Mickey, I heard Mickey Cashton use in a film I was watching this morning. She's living a vagabond life at present. She had a, a slightly word, 
longer word than vagabond. Vagabondage, something like that. No, I don't think it had bondage up. Up vagabondage, up yours, as X-ray specs would sing. She last I heard, although she is perhaps the main uh, founder of San Francisco's Bay NVC. I love Bay NVC and many of the people. Well, I know two. <laughs> yeah, exaggerate. Kit Miller, uh, who's worked with Don McBarter, and um, and Mickey Cashton are my favourites from those I know, but I don't know enough about what Bay NVC do. I was very impressed when they set up their first TV channel, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so I would recommend that you follow at Bay NVC if they're still tweeting, or even if they're not, it's a micro blog. It's got a lot of good links on it. Follow it back. Um, Mickey Cashton, last I heard, was in Scotland, um, but where her vagabondage has taken her. <laughs> you see, being a vagabond is the opposite of bondage, hence the laws of trespass and all the, you know, all the threats. I would highly recommend, I wish I could hold it up, but I only have it on Kindle, The Book of Trespass. That explores, you know, the threat of uh, the traveller to the established order. And um, it's very interesting how the rights uh, to go where you want and do what you want to do have been curtailed. Um, and of course, they weren't always existent. We, you know, people roamed free in the earliest days. Now, if I had a choice between roaming free and being in the present society, I would be in the present society. But I believe the rights and responsibilities balance of the present society is askew. And I will be writing about this in the book that I'm looking for a publisher for, for 2021. Political consensus compass, that's it. And at the bottom of the political consensus compass, um, on the kind of politics side is rights and on the deeper accountability is responsibilities. I have a friend who would say that you can't blame the government for COVID-19, so don't be too hard on them and riot. I would say, just like a, any other war, you know, you couldn't blame the Second World War on Winston Churchill, but we needed to take on extra responsibility to fight that war, and then we needed extra rights, not as a reward, but just as a sense, just as a, to meet our needs for justice. Um, after after the war. Wars have a wonderful effect, uh, so the historians tell us, on uh, rebalancing society uh, and advancing welfare states. Um, that is if you're in a democratic country. So um, I'm almost tempted not to go into the theme I was going to go into, but um, since some of the rest of this is relevant and you may have a sense of me as a character now, I will perhaps label this film hashtag Sri Ratna Buddhist Movement. So for me in my life, undoubtedly, Ergin Sangharakshita has been the greatest teacher. Uh, my life would not have the direction, the purpose, the meaning. It probably wouldn't be here. I know others who uh, have said they would have committed suicide were it not for encountering the teachings of Sangharakshita. Um, and of course, if you look him up on the web, the things you see will be negative and may put you off exploring. Bring, but I would encourage you to be more independently minded than that and do the exploring because it pays dividends. Just like if you've ever been in the press and my one of my worst recent bits of press was in Rye News. I was trying, they were trying to present me as an idealist, which I am, but a naive idealist, which I like to think I'm not. But then who, who would admit to being a naive idealist? I call Boris jo Johnson a naive optimist, but he wouldn't he wouldn't admit to that. Um, <coughs> although if I asked him question after question about what he presumed was going to happen in terms of COVID and Rishi Sunak with his scattergun almost, but business orientated funding um, of the economy post the coming of the pandemic era, if I asked them questions about what they thought was going to happen and what did happen, I think I could expose a level of naivety um, alongside the optimism. Um, now, I do take an adage from Winston Churchill here in one of his Nobel winning prizes, um, prize Nobel award, Nobel award for literature winning books. He did a series of books. Um, he came into government, he just got writing. 
and uh, it was good for us as a legacy that we've got that um, and and that we've got Atley and that when Winston Churchill changes that Atley had made rather than us having a seesaw government if you go to hashtag Hastings Citizen Manifesto Zero zero three, I think it is Eddie's manifesto. I met him in a bake in a baker's. What he said to me, it's a professor of what I've been working on since then, which is unfolding in this um, compass: rights and responsibilities at the bottom, kind of politics on the right, um, deeper accountability on the left. I'll leave what's ahead and what's in the middle to. In fact, you're in the middle. Let's just uh, break that. Uh, if you want to be on the pitch, like Marcus Rashford is a big player on the pitch, Mirap is a good player on the pitch, anyone who um, uploads a grassroots manifesto of four to ten points can just email it to me, I'll do the rest. Paul, in fact, I'll give you the more special email address for this. If you've got a grassroots manifesto to submit, then it's paul.crossland, one S, at mediation support ltd.org. That is my special, almost secret email address. So please don't uh, spread it around unless it's for the purposes of uh, grassroots manifestos. I don't want that address copied electronically other than in a one to one email. Thank you. Um, so if you want to know what album this was given to me by the main woman in my life the best of the 80s she she knows my decade i go a little bit into the 90s um you know and if you want to know whether i'm oasis or blur i'm oasis <laughs> i mean wouldn't any punk be more oasis than blur um anyhow 80s is my decade more than anything else and this this five cd set five yep is rather yeah, with CD four or five. We've got, oh, so next we've got Dolly Parton, nine to five, followed by the Nolans. I'm in the mood for dancing, romancing, romancing. Sorry. You don't want to, you didn't come here to hear me sing, let alone Terence Trent Darby, if, if you let me stay. Um, no, I cannot do a good impersonation of any of these people. So what am I saying? I am saying that I'm a product of um, growing up with Margaret Thatcher, of a diversity, uh, Margaret Thatcher in power since from the age of 13. Yeah, more my teenage years, it were shouted. Ah, oh, can I say that definitely? I may have slipped into a half joking Maggie Maggie out, out, out. but I said we hate Tories we hate Tories and we hate Tories we are the Tory haters if you follow the hashtag politics on a platform on Twitter you'll get to my invitation to Maria Rapa Mickey Cashton and um, Russell Brand that went up today on Twitter uh, and you get links to uh, their respective Twitter accounts and web uh, pages. So I'd say that's a, the best thing to follow up from here other than doing your grassroots manifesto and getting on the pitch um, because we're working towards a convergent uh, constituency manifesto. So if you're not in Hastings and Rye, please list the constituency for your grassroots manifesto. Sorry, if you are, whatever constituency you are in, please list it when you email and I hope you've got pen ready now to check that you've written this down correctly paul.crossland with one s c charlie romeo oscar sierra lima alpha november delta at mediation do i need to do that um morris my dad um edward a middle name d um daniel someone at sheffield sanger oh used to be called daniel um the I, Ian, down to previous name, um, E, oh, Eddie from Manifesto, Hastings Citizen Manifesto 003, which you can find on additionalinfo.blogspot.com if you go back far enough. Probably need to do a separate page for manifestos, convergent manifesto. Uh, yeah, that would be good if I can get around to editing a page with that. Um, 
I've lost track. I was an E. That wasn't pro mediation support. I think I didn't spell it right. Mediation support limited org. Anyhow, we're working nine to five. Actually, I work such irregular hours, many hours, but they're irregular. I've done a full day's work already and it's 10 o'clock in the morning because I've been up since midnight working on things. Working midnight till 10. Working midnight to 10. Anyhow, um, I was going to talk about how I am shifting some loyalty uh, um, in terms of where I feel it's safer to put my energy. Safer is a word we can discuss below. But I, I, I advise in the forthcoming book, Level Up Our Life, that you join two cults at once. And if you're not deeply embedded in two cults, then you're in quite a precarious situation, I would say, in terms of networks of support, networks of influence. Um, networks of support, networks of influence are very, very important. Anyhow, and, it's, and there is, comes a time to switch one's energy from one horse to the other. Um, and I'm switching a lot of energy because I'm, I'm deeply upset about where people have put their loyalty, not to friends in Sri Ratna, but more to um, an attachment to being ordained or a wish to level down other people around them. So I'm actually following Sandra Exeter's advice in withdrawing from an institution that is not supporting the development of the true individual to um, Mickey Cashton's trainings, which I find more supportive of the development of the true individual. That's my brief message. Maybe that's a tweet that I can put out at the end, end of that. Thank you for your attention. Uh, tell me where you're putting your energy and if you were going to switch horses, what you would switch horses to. I would other suggestions as to a good place to switch horses in these times is a cult to do with health. For example, are you in COVID-19 a member of one or other, one of many health cults? If so, which? I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. And your grassroots manifesto, four to ten points, please. You know, dream big what you would like to happen. And please advise me of any publishers you know.